welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today on the show, we have Corey Colton. He's an executive coach and he wrote the Kevin MD article when coaching physicians with wellness don't lead with mindfulness. Corey, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to connect. I really appreciate it. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and your journey to where you are today? Yeah, I didn't take a straight line journey. So uh, corporate in itself is my third career. I was originally in restaurants and hospitality, and then I had a time in uh, performing. So I was an opera singer. Um, I got into the corporate world uh, over 20 years ago, and I've been in learning and leadership development for most of that time. And most recently, I was in healthcare and academic medicine at Vanderbilt Medical Center. Why should physicians consider executive coaching? When we think about the solutions that are often presented to physicians um, who may be leading teams that they didn't expect to lead or in the middle of the uh, intersection between um, corporatized healthcare and strategy and patient care, which is what they originally got into the profession for, um, some of the solutions sometimes that are presented to them are not the most effective at helping them solve their issues. So um, coaching is a learning technology and change management technology that helps them navigate through some of the challenges they're experiencing and is one method of helping them derive some solutions for themselves. Uh, it's not the only method that they probably need, but coaching is forward thinking. Um, it's thought partnering. It's helping them to arrive at their own best answers uh, which is where they have span of control in the immediate moment. So what's a typical scenario that you find clinicians coming to you for and what kind of problem are they trying to solve or what kind of skills are they trying to acquire? Yeah, so generally my work with physicians are in a couple of areas, one of which is exploring well-being uh, and trying to understand um, what is in their scope, uh, what they want in their scope, what they don't want in their scope, and how do they put some boundaries around that to get back to the heart of why they got into their um, care career. Um, or it's physicians who have been moved into a leadership role um, because they were great physicians and they have great pipeline or they may have research money and um, they have been elevated into a leadership role. And sometimes organizations don't prepare them for that leadership role. Um, leadership has a different set of skills that sometimes are a little bit contrary to the skills they learned in medical school. Uh, and so uh, it may be a physician who's um, navigating a leadership challenge or trying to understand how to lead staff um, as opposed to being in a collaborative physician situation, which is different. Now, what are some of the specific skills that you're talking about that they need in a leadership role that may be in contrast with what they learned in medical school? Yeah, so in a leadership role, a physician may experience that they have to translate and execute on the um, system strategy, which may have to do with uh, space management, um, compliance, rules and regulations, policies and procedures, uh, budgets, um, managing uh, the contrast between wanting to extend patient care and wanting to optimize the budget coming from the system which may be in contrast to why they got into healthcare in the first place, which is to do everything that they can to take care of patients and focusing on that patient care. So we need to help those physicians translate that uh, system level strategy into actionable goals and interactions when they have to start managing staff. So uh, it's just a little bit of a, it's a very lot change of mindset for them to start thinking from the system level in addition to um, taking care of their patients. And how easy is that transition? Um, do you find that most physicians that you coach are amenable to these strategies? Um, do you have a pretty good success rate in implementing some of these leadership skills? Um, I think it varies. I think some people have some natural leadership abilities and slip into that role fairly easily. Um, I do find, though, that there are some physicians that have a harder time with it. Um, so what I try to do in my role and after is to help them understand where their natural leadership abilities lie and where their strong points lie and where they may need to um, develop some skills uh, a little bit more around uh, decision-making, problem-solving, uh, what we would call in the regular corporate world managing up. So how do they manage back to the system and bring information back up the chain to enable that two-way communication stream 
for some it's easier and for others it's much more difficult. Some people are promoted to a leadership role and um, all they know at that point is to show up at the meetings that they were told to show up at and make sure the pipeline's flowing. Um, but they may not have the sort of personal interaction skills with staff populations or nursing populations that would be helpful for them. All right, let's transition into your Kevin MD article. When coaching physicians with wellness, don't lead with mindfulness. Now, for those who haven't read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and maybe share the story of why you decided to write it? So uh, in my time in academic medicine, as we heard about um, incidences of physician burnout, uh, which mostly came about in my experience uh, after we went live with a new EPIC implementation, um, one of the first suggestions from the institution, from the wellness groups was, they need to be more resilient. Let's help them be more resilient. Let's get them some mindfulness techniques. And what I experienced firsthand in trying to lead a workshop on resilience is, those suggestions out of the gate can uh, have the effect of making the physician feel like they are do, doing something wrong uh, and that they are not doing enough to uh, improve their own wellness. And I think that is um, the wrong position that we want to take. I think the position that we want to take is to understand from the physician's perspective, what are the people process technology intersections that are causing the issues for them in the first place? and then try and work at a systemic level to try and solve those. And for some, mindfulness and resilience might be a good tool, but I don't think we should lead with that because um, we want to make sure that the physician population feels heard and feels uh, valued and that their opinion matters. And I think leading with uh, mindfulness uh, just automatically tells them that they're not doing something right. Now, when these systems bring you in and you, they ask you to address physician burnout and then you turn around and say, no, we should focus more on systems within the institution itself. Now, what's normally their reaction when you do that? Well, I probably wouldn't start with that. I would probably make the suggestion that we do some sort of conversations and listening uh, tours to understand what the issues are that the physicians are experiencing. Because what I found recently that has been sort of exciting to me is that I think that there's a difference between burnout and compassion fatigue. And so um, if we can understand what the issue each physician is facing, then we can craft a solution that's at multiple levels. So I probably wouldn't go to the health system and say, no, this is a systemic issue we need to fix. I might say, let's do some listening tours. Let's find out what the issues are. And then as health systems are usually data-driven, we can then bring that data back to the system and say, all right, here's the issues that we're finding are really causing this. Um, and those issues may be in my personal scope or may not be in my personal scope to help. It may be that they need to get lean healthcare groups, process improvement groups, uh, health IT, the people who have the electronic medical records together to try and solve some of these issues. And then for those for whom coaching resilience and mindfulness training is helpful. We can move forward with that. Uh, but we do see, especially since the, um, the JAMA article from Mayo Clinic, that coaching has a very uh, great impact on physicians and how they navigate compassion fatigue and burnout. Now, you made um, the distinction between burnout and compassion fatigue. Can you specifically articulate the differences between the two? Yeah, for me, compassion fatigue is when a clinician is focusing so much on patient care and giving and giving and giving without having the time to restore, rejuvenate, um, and reflect uh, so that they can't renew themselves. So they're constantly giving. And I think we're probably gonna see a lot of this during and after the COVID pandemic. This is an issue that's even more important than it was before. So compassion fatigue may have a different solution for that physician if we can get them to the point where they feel supported and they have time to restore and rejuvenate and then can come back refreshed. Burnout, in my view, tend to be systemic issues that work together to negatively impact the physician and they may feel the same symptoms. It may be exhaustion, it may be depression, it may be suicidal ideation, which also may come from compassion fatigue, but the causes are different. And so, we may have a situation where a physician has the systemic burnout symptoms and compassion fatigue at the same time, or it may just be compassion fatigue, and they may be absolutely fine with the systems and the processes and the technology. So I think we need to just be very careful about we, how we help them self-diagnose, how we ask the questions to get them to the point of 
having answers that make sense for them. And then we can start moving the other teams in that help support these solutions. We're talking to Corey Colton. He is an executive coach and he wrote the Kevin MD article, when coaching physicians with wellness don't lead with mindfulness. Corey, if I'm a clinician who's um, feeling symptoms of potential burnout or compassion fatigue, what's uh, my next step? What's your advice in terms of what I should do next? Well, I would say that especially at the tail end of COVID and after, I think we're going to see um, a huge rise uh, in these issues coming to the forefront. And what I would say is don't give up. You've spent most of your life, most of your finances, and most of your passion on this career that you love. Uh, as we know, physicians are sometimes the last, last to ask for help um, or to raise issues. Uh, they feel like they should be able to fix it themselves. And I guess my advice would be don't go through this yourself. Um, rely on your care teams, rely on your colleagues. Don't be afraid to ask for help. There are people out there that can help you with this. Um, even outside of the systemic wellness groups, there are coaches, there are groups that are self-standing. Um, a lot of people on your website who are out there to help. And I think that um, don't give up. Um, I recently saw an article where almost 12% of physicians are considering leaving medicine after COVID, um, which would be heartbreaking for the industry. Um, and also from a business perspective could turn into a 60 to $70 billion issue. And so I think um, healthcare needs to start investing in supportive solutions like coaching uh, to help physicians stay on course and do what they love to do. And when physicians begin to look for coaches, what are some of the red flags or what are some of the things that they should be looking out for? I believe uh, in the coaching industry, we say you don't really have to know the industry to be a coach. I, I think though that's different in the healthcare um, area. I think it's good for the coach to have context um, around what the physicians may be experiencing. Um, I believe that they should be able to speak the language and understand all of the forces that are coming together to, to create this. And I think that they should look for a coach who's going to be open and curious to understand what the actual issue is for that particular physician and thought partner with them to help them remove roadblocks and bring their best thinking to it. So even though the physician may not have scope to fix all the systemic issues, it has to start with their own evaluation of their own situation um, and what answers are inside of them. So I think a red flag might be um, if a coach is coming to you with solutions, um, or canned answers, that might be a red flag. I think building that trust and safety with the coach, feeling comfortable with them, understanding that they have the context to understand what's happening in the background, and then being curious um, and asking the right questions to get to your issue are probably the best ways to move forward. And my final question, what's your take home message that you wanna leave with the Kevin MD audience? Yeah, I, I think reiterating what I said before is just don't give up. Um, you got into this career because it's a passion. You wanted to help people. You wanted to give care. And um, it may be that you might have to rethink the way you're interacting with the healthcare system. Uh, but don't give up because there are people out there to help. Corey, thank you so much for your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it.